I think NVIDIA's got some new fingers for us. What's up guys, I'm Snells and this is your boot sequence. It seems like all we can get from NVIDIA is PCB shots. With their announcement at Gamescom getting closer and closer, we now have the supposed GTX 1180 PCB. What's really interesting about those photos leaked by Chip Hell is that if this is a consumer grade board, what is up with those SLI fingers? Now you might be saying, no Snows, these are not SLI fingers, clearly they're NVLink. Well look again, it's neither. NVLink is the reverse of this layout with the small finger on the right side and SLI is much shorter as is. I also thought that this might be the same board we saw last month, but it's not since the power delivery here is a 6 and 8 pin instead of a triple 8 pin layout. So what could this actually be? A consumer version of NVLink or just SLI 2.0? Anyways, with the big push from Nvidia on their big format gaming display and their push to 4K 120Hz HDR G-Sync monitors, I think that Nvidia might be considering something unconventional for this roundup of cards. I mean, some rumors even said that the TI branding might be changed to plus. Anyways, there's 17 days to go before we know anything concrete, so let's just wait patiently. <laughs> Moving on, SK Hynix is set to build a new memory fab near its headquarters in South Korea. Now I know you might not really care about something like that, but here's why I think this is interesting. As you know, memory pricing affects a lot of stuff from the price of our SSDs, RAMs, GPUs, even phones and more. And while we've heard that pricing for memory would drop in the near future, there are things to consider when predictions are made. Like this time, AI and machine learning might eat off the GDDR6 supply out of our GPUs, making them once again more expensive or even rarer. I mean, damn, every time we think we're out of the hole with GPUs or memory, boom, something else comes up and bumps up the price or eats our supplies. Anyways, if you want to read a full report on the subject, the EE Times has a pretty good article on it, linked below. Then we have Google, which is reportedly trying to get their search engine back into China. Now, if you didn't know, Google shut down their Chinese search engine back in 2010 because of the government's attempts to limit free speech on the web. Well, now, according to internal documents given to The Intercept by a whistleblower, Google has been developing a censored version of their search engine codenamed Dragonfly. While I do see why a censored search engine is not necessarily the most ethical thing, I feel like we can't really blame Google, right? I mean, they want a piece of the market and they'll do what they can to get it. China already has a countrywide firewall that stops citizens from accessing a lot of sites. So it might hurt Google's image a little bit towards anti-censorship groups, but as a business move, it's a business move. What do you think about censorship like this? Let me know down below. Then in gaming, we have Tesla. Yep. Tesla. Elon Musk recently announced that a variety of classics from the Atari system will make their debut on Tesla consoles. Well, not actual consoles, but the screen in the car, the console. Among the classics, Elon hopes to include Tempest, Missile Command, and Pole Position, with the latter having the game playable using the steering wheel while stationary. Not only that, but Tesla is actively trying to recruit video game developers to make, and I quote, super fun games that integrate the center touch screen phone and car in real life. Maybe we'll see a Pokemon Go Tesla edition or something like that. And lastly, Valve's Artifact game finally gets a release date. The Dota 2 themed card game will release on the 28th of November on Steam and cost 20 bucks. When it launches, there will be 280 cards available, but we don't know how many you'll get on your deck at the start. What's interesting about this game is that it will use the Steam marketplace for you to be able to trade cards or sell them if you want to. I think I just might get into that one. I love things where you can trade with other people. And now let's answer a question from you guys and today it is, what are those speakers? Are they powered monitors? Well, yes they are, very good eye my friend. These are KRK Rocket RP6s. They're the first generation, they're built like tanks and I've had them for almost a decade. I would highly recommend them if you want some good sound quality. But you gotta be careful about one thing, you need very good acoustics in the room. Now that I've moved here, the acoustics is terrible in this room. But in the old apartments that I was in, I always had like big carpets or a bed inside the same room which absorbed a lot of the sound. And that's pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and leave me a question down below in the comment section. Also, the comment section is meant for discussion, so go ahead and 
you talk to each other. Make sure that there is communication. Click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you stay frosty and I'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna stay, not, I'm gonna stay still for a few seconds just so you can click on the free content or subscribe to the channel. All right, take care. Stay frosty.